Hello, everyone who's joining. I am going to share this with a few groups right off the bat here. So bear with me real quick. If you jump in the live stream, say hello. I'm just uh, I'm just going to share this with a few groups real quick, and we will get started. What I'm doing is I am going to show you guys how to tie your own nail weights. If you've got a vice or if you don't have a vice, it's not that difficult. Uh, it's it's maybe a smidge more difficult, but it way outweighs the the effort of, or I guess the cost of going and buying some of those branded skirted nail weights. We won't man mention any manufacturers, but they're like $2.99, $3.99, and you get like two or three. And I'm going to show you guys how to make these nail weights, literally, for two pennies. So let me share this real quick, and we will get cranking. All right, so how do you share, or how do you make these for two pennies? Well, uh, you gotta think about it. What we're gonna use, and it's important that you use the right nail, it's, a, uh, it's like a paneling nail, so it's a ring shank nail. And the reason you want a ring shank nail is because of the grip it provides you. Now, typically a nail weight, which you can't buy as cheap as, cheap as these uh, for, what they give you so that the nail weights almost have kind of a toothed um, indentation. So what they fit into the plastic you're going to use like a Senko worm, they grip in and the ring shank nails. And I don't know how well you guys can see, I don't know if it's going to focus, but the ring shank nails, ouch, <laughs> caught my beard in my vice. Uh, they have little uh, ridges on them so that when you push them into the soft plastic, they're going to hold, fairly well. They don't hold quite as well as a standard nail weight was at will, but for two pennies, you can make a ton of them and you're not missing out on anything if they fall out. So here's here's what we're gonna do. The the second component, and you only need two components, is the uh the ring shank nails. I use a one inch, you can get whatever size you want. We're gonna use one ring shank nail, put that on the vise. And then a pack of skirting. And then I've got this Skirts Unlimited stuff. I bought a pack of it for $2.49. And I think you can get, uh, I think I, I counted, I tried to count like how much is in, there's like a strand. So it's like 30 in a strand. So you get like 300 strands of this skirting for $2.49. So less than a penny a strand. And you can make, I guess, as many, you know, skirt pieces of skirt on a nail weight but i typically use two pieces because when you fold it in half it ends up being four so it's the perfect amount uh to go into the back of you know a, a senko so here's what we're going to do we're going to take two strands pop those off <clears throat> now it does help if you've got a little experience tying flies but if not i'm going to show you guys how to do it let keep this a little closer here. So you're gonna tie at the very edge by the, the head of the nail and you're just gonna wrap. And then you're gonna pull this string a little bit further down and then you're gonna wrap down the nail and not too far though. I'm only going like an eighth of an inch, right? Give that a couple rotations back and forth. Snip, snip. Then we're gonna take our two strings of skirting. and we're getting as close to the head of the nail as possible. Give it a couple wraps. Oops. That's the hard part about this rubber stuff is it's so bouncy. One wrap, two wrap. Then we're gonna take and we're gonna kind of fold it back out of the way here. And we're gonna give it I don't know, 10 or 15 good wraps. And that is pretty much all you gotta do. And then we're gonna use 
uh, either a whip finisher if you're a fly tire, or if not, you can just take the, where you take your thumb, go around your finger, and you do a, a few of these little finish knots. But since I have a whip finisher, we're going to whip finish. Give that a few rotations. And then it is secure. I'm gonna give that a little snip. And then to secure it all down, I've got some UV glue. You don't need much. This stuff sets up pretty quick. You just give it a little tiny dab. Hit it with the UV flashlight. And that is how you're gonna make your own nail weights for two pennies. There you go. And you can trim that skirt to wherever you want it. And then at the end of the day, you just take any Senko stick worm. You can probably put it in a, you know, a Ned rig. But you push it down into the head of the Senko. And now you have a skirted Senko. You can use it. Traditionally, you're going to use it wacky because the nail weight gives you a little bit of offset weight for this side, so you get a little bit better fluttering. This this side comes down a little quicker, and uh, when you're you know doing the wacky action, you get a little bit more visual presentation because you got skirting. You can use any color you want. So we're going to do a few different colors here, and I am going to get kind of uh, stocked up for nail weights for the spring because. I've never brought myself to buy a nail weight because, I don't know, for what you get, they're kind of expensive. And I was like, you know what? I could buy my own skirting and, uh, you know, figured out the cost. And I was like, man, we could make these for nothing, literally nothing. We could make so many that if I do lose them or they pop out, they're worth nothing to me. So, all right. That is uh, that's the green pumpkin. I've got... I've got a black and blue. I've got kind of like a PB and J almost. And then we've got a chartreuse. So if you're watching, someone comment which one do you want to see next? Black and blue, PB and J, chartreuse. What are we tying up next? I will get the next nail ready. Snip, snip. What up, Mike? I'm going PB and J. Thank you, sir. It's fun. I bought these skirts, and I've uh, made a few things already. I've tied up a few things. I actually took uh, the Cast Cray Tungsten uh, uh, Ned Heads jig. I posted a little 60-second video. What's up, Recovery Bass and TV? What's up, fool? I took one of these early today, and with one of the Cast Cray Nubs, the Ned Rig, and I made Ned Rig to level 100. I've been thinking about this idea for so long, and I don't know. I just haven't. I had just haven't busted one out. Um, I was just like, you know what? I'm getting the fly tying out, and I'm I'm gonna tie for bass related stuff. And uh, there's so much stuff you can use. Like literally, bass tying, like fly tying, is so creative. Uh, <laughs> you can make fun stuff. This is a a duster. You can make these are like, I don't know, $4 and I've got like 200 of these. You can make little like worm trailers for your hooks and stuff. So I think one of these days I'm going to go into the, the, the dollar general and I'm going to do a fly tying challenge where I can only fly tie other than my thread and my glue, just fly tie with uh, just random stuff off the shelf in the dollar general. I think that that'd be a fun challenge. 
I wish there was someone else like close to me that I knew that tied flies so we can have like a, a tie off. All right, PB and J. We get a couple strands. Mike, how many strands should I use? How many do you want to see? You want to go two? You want to go four? How many strands? You call it. I like this PBJ. I am, I am, uh, I'm a little bit more of a fan of darker colors when it comes to fishing. I love dark lures. I like dark trailers. When I'm when I'm getting hard baits, um, girl who ties flies on TikTok. Ooh, I'll have to check that out. Um, I always I, when I go for hard baits, I always want to see uh, like a dark color bottom. Um, I just it just I think it does a better job of giving a, like a nice silhouette, um, especially if it's like a top water. I always look for a dark bottom on a top water. I see a mic, four strands, four strands it is. That'll give us eight total when we fold it over. All right, four strands of the PB and J. One, two, and we're just gonna fold them back out of the way and give it a few ties. The good thing about this is that the thread doesn't create a too large of a head. The only thing you don't wanna do is, is make the, 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 the tying rotations thicker than the, than the head of the nail weight or the head of the nail because that's what's gonna stop it from going and pushing into the, uh, the soft plastic. And that's it. Super easy. Like you can, you know, if I was really concentrating and like not going to like have a conversation and talk, you literally, I was, you could crank out uh, some of these. I am terrible at whip finishing. <laughs> terrible. You can tell I am a rookie fly tire. I am by no means an expert at doing this, but it's really fun. And the reason I love it so much is you can get, Super creative with the stuff you tie flies, how you tie flies. I mean, I've learned that some stuff won't quite swim as well, depending on the way that you tie it. So I'm learning. A little dab of glue. This stuff, this stuff is good. If you're just like trying to tie and, and like learning to tie, you can tie on like, um, like a pair of vice grips and you can put it on a, like on, on a vice on your bench or just hold it in between your knees and you can do all this tying yourself. You don't have to use this nice 210 denier thread. You can just use thread. That's it. And you don't have to use fancy UV glue either. You can use nail polish, which I have for some of these. Like if I want it to cure and I don't really need to have it dry like quickly, but I've got so much of this, I don't care. Um, the UV stuff is nice because as soon as you, cure it, it's dried in seconds. So it's like super quick, fast drying, super glue. All right, trim that up, get these even. All right, there you go, Mike. Here's the PB and J with four strands, which would really be eight strands. Let's pop that, let's pop that in a soft plastic here. I'll use white so you can really see this thing pop out. Now tell me that wouldn't be fire. Wacky rig and that. Tell me that's not gonna give extra attention to uh to your presentation. I'm telling you. That's uh these are these are these are legit. These are legit. I'm gonna continue making these. I think we'll go uh, I think we'll go chartreuse. We'll go chartreuse. Next, I'll crack that open. So while we're uh, while we're just bumming around here, I heard a lot, a lot of people are talking about what you're going to throw in the spring for that pre-spawn bite. And I'm a super big fan of uh, Ned rigs, but probably one of my other fun bites is because I love doing finesse style fishing. Is a uh, uh, a wacky rig. And that's why I'm making these because wacky rigs are just, they're fun. You can fish them fast. You can let them flutter all the way to the bottom and then start pulling them up. You can just let them chill there at the bottom and then just give them a little peck pecks. Or you can put a, I, sometimes I even throw a weight 
uh, like a weighted jig on my wacky rig so it sinks really quick and I can work that action really quick. Or you can go weightless wacky. Do one in each end of the nail. Tell me what you mean there. You don't want to do one at the at the other side of the nail. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do one on each side uh, of the of the of the worm. Oh, that is actually pretty fire. Now, this is a yum dinger, so it's got a little pointy end. So I'm going to cut that off just a touch to give us a fatter, fatter end. Yeah, you see that that point's not going to accept a, a nail too well. But now that one will. Man, I don't know why I didn't think of this. I think because with a nail weight, you the purpose is you want one side to be heavier than the other, so you get that off balance fluttering action, but. <laughs> That's super fire. That is super fire. Yeah. All right. Recovery Bass on TV. Thank you. That is officially in the arsenal. The double, the double weighted skirted uh, nail rig. Heck yeah. I seen a guy put skirts on his wacky rig. He rigged it with the uh, center O rings. Yeah. Yeah, center O-rings are, are clutch, especially if you have a plastic that's less durable. Um, helps helps not keep that thing uh, from ripping out. All right. What did we say? We're going to go chartreuse. Let's do a mega skirt on this one. We'll go, we'll go a ton of strands here and make it like a, an actual jig. So drop a drop a comment in there. What do you guys? What is your top spring tossing bait? What are you going after to get that that first that first fish in spring? First spawning fish in spring. I know a lot of you guys. I see you catching catching some stuff in the winter time. I actually just got uh, got to fish at a trout pond the other day. And uh, caught four rainbow trout, ate two of them for dinner that night for Valentine's Day. It was they were really good, really good. All right, what we say, chartreuse. Okay, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a handful of these. Let's go like ten. <clears throat> oh, he puts the skirts in the middle. Oh, like over the O ring. Mmm. I like that. I like that. That's actually pretty clutch. Yeah, you'd have to leave those kind of kind of long. You put the O-ring on it. And then you get the since these are so light, you get these fluttering up as this thing goes down. I like that idea. All right. We're going a big old handful of chartreuse here. I need to get some of the slack out. There we go. Ooh, this is gonna be a it's gonna be a thick head on this jig. This is probably why we don't want to go too heavy. I don't know if this is all gonna push in here. We're gonna try it, right? Who cares? Like I said, it's only pennies. All right. Didn't leave myself a lot of room here. It's a lot of material right there at the end. <laughs> All right, I need some help. I got these little, these little tiny <laughs> hair clips. Helps a lot when you're using loose product. There we go. Much better. 
Let's give that a second one because I don't think I pulled that off very well. Boom. All right. Give that a snip snip. Take that off. Let's trim these up. This is going to be the mega skirted nail weight. Look at that. Look at that. Let's hit this with a touch of glue. Ooh, ooh. I like how that, you guys probably can't see it as well on, on the screen, but that chartreuse looks glow in the dark under the UV light here. <clears throat> I'm telling you, uh, uh, Texas Rig Crawl or on a chatterbait, I mean, Texas Rig Crawl or a Senko is just like, if you want to catch anything, like you're just struggling to get a bite. Oh, he used two O-rings. I feel you. On the white Senko? I feel you. Well, let's put it on a white Senko. Man, you could put one of these on any of your soft plastics just to give it a little extra frill. And it's really not going to get in the way of anything because all the metal is going to be buried inside the plastic. I don't have any O-rings um, close by anyway. I think they're on the car where I'd try out, try out that idea. Yeah, we really built up the head on that one. <laughs> Jam it in there. But yeah, look at that. That's about... 20 or so strands. I like that. Bigger presentation. Get that wacky rigged up. Heck yeah. Awesome, awesome. Hey guys, if you don't mind, hit the like button. Drop me a comment. What color you want to see? I've got PB and J. I've got black and blue. PB and J. You just saw the chartreuse. And I've got a green pumpkin. We are tying nail weights if you are just joining. We're tying nail weights. This is how you make a skirted nail weight for two pennies. These things you get about, I don't even, I don't even know what the count is. 358 pieces in a box, and it's probably four dollars. So these are like a penny a piece. And then in each pack of these, you get like 300 strands. And these packs are like $2.50. I'm sure you can find them for three or four dollars somewhere, but so another penny per strand. So we're making these nail weights for like two pennies, three pennies. I think maybe the big one was like a dime. So this is a way you can save money because we've all seen those skirted nail weights. Um can't even remember the name of the brand, but I wouldn't, I'm not gonna put them down. I mean, obviously they're making money. Uh, the difference is there is an obvious difference, right? You're not going to get dollar for dollar the same performance because a ring shank nail doesn't weigh the same as like those lead nail weights. So you're not really getting as much of a difference with the weight as far as getting that off balance. Uh, but you are getting a skirted presentation, which is like the real reason that I'm tying these because I think it's, I think it's a real added bonus when you can get that visual presentation on a wacky rig and you can get that flutter on the sides. And recovery bass, and I like the idea of doing a skirt on each side or even even through the middle. That's kind of clutch. <clears throat> All right. You know, I was thinking about that selling some of these. Like, man, I can probably cr I can probably crank out. I mean, if I focused on it, I can crank out one a minute. These are super easy to make. Gary, what's going on, sir? Uh, yeah, these are these are fun to make. I mean. You guys, uh, what do you think I should sell a pack of 10 for? Like, cause here's the issue. Like I, I get so mad that these things look so cheap as far as the raw materials and you get like two, three in a pack and they're like $3. And I'm like, why? why? These are not worth a dollar a piece. Sell a 10 pack for like 99 cents. I don't know if that's worth the time in doing it, but 
Who knows? You know, I like that too. They don't have to add too much weight and still get a skirted presentation. I like that it doesn't really mess with the the balance of your of your wacky rig or whatever you're going to skirt out. Um, I, I like that. And another thing you can do that I've that I've been prepping since I've had my vice out, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go all out and like really, like, you know, deck out some of my some of my stuff. As I love throwing a top water, but I'll take my top water and I'll take the back treble hook and I'll put just a little bit of marabou which is that fine that fine like kind of fluffy feather I'll put that on the back because I love that when I stop a top water top water bait in the water I love that 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 marabou just kind of sits there and kind of entices the fish it just kind of rests on top of the water that's a I always look for top waters that have like a little bit of a feather jig on the back hook and I've taken some of my, you can buy like those, those cheap BPS poppers. And I've taken those in the past because they're like $1.99 and just feather every single one of them. They're awesome. Cast and Blast, thanks for joining. Sell hope, not materials. Hey, listen, I didn't even think about selling these until someone just said it, but I'm just, I'm just stocking up for the spring. That's, that's my plan. I want to get like a, a stock of these. I want to get like a hundred because I love wacky rig fishing. And I just want to have so many that I don't have to worry about running out or if they pop out or whatever. You know what? I, I might just give some of these away because they're so cheap. And I, just as a thanks for watching some of these videos and uh, I don't have to put them in some crazy pack. I can just put them in an envelope for whatever uh, a stamp costs nowadays. What does a stamp cost nowadays? What about a stamp? Are they like 45 cents now? 50 cents? Yeah. What up, Rick? We are tying nail weights, skirted nail weights for two pennies. If you guys are just joining, hit me with a like on there. I would appreciate it. Share it to a group of fishermen. <clears throat> cool. I saw one of your posts on the Facebook community today about adding one to the Ned Rig. Yes, it's this. It is the Cast Cray Ned Heads. And the Cast Cray Nub. And I've always wanted to do a Ned Jig. And this is, uh, this is Cast Cray. Uh, with a little bit of skirt presentation. Because when that thing sits on bottom, and when you're fluttering it up and down, man, that's just going to give it some extra flash. Now, I just put a random color on here. But I think with like a darker color, I would put like a lighter skirt on there to give it some contrast so when this flutters up it attracts the fish because it's kind of going past uh the uh alternate colors i think that would be a really good idea gary you want to test them out hit me in a dm and give me your uh, address i'll send you some sir recovery bass and i know you want some too send me that send me the dm with your address i'll send you some send it to uh you guys both have my facebook uh, I think Facebook, uh, Matt's fishing mission, just send a DM on there. I'll make you some, send them out. Yeah. Skirt. Yeah. The skirt material does kind of like float up a, a bit. So it's, uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a killer presentation. Yeah. Swim bait. Uh, like you could use it with anything. I, I just pulled out like a ton of like just basic, my cheapo, like I don't care about yum plastics. You could throw it on like a, I guess, I guess you could throw it on like a paddle tail. Hmm. All right. See you, Rick. I guess you could throw I don't know if it would fit. This is kind of a this is kind of a thin nail weight. Yeah, this one already poked, poked through the tail. Yeah, but if you had like a robust, um, ooh, let's see, we might make this work. Yeah, if you had a robust swim bait, paddle tail, or something like that, this one is totally wrecked. <laughs> poked through the tail. But yeah, if you had like a nice beefy one with a nice beefy tail, this is kind of a smaller presentation paddle tail too. That would totally work. 
Yeah, I appreciate you, Rick. Thanks for hopping on. Um, yeah, hey guys, Rick, he's our captain over at Cascray. He's the owner. Shout out to him for bringing me on the team. Thank you very much, sir. If you guys uh, want to check out any stuff over at Cascray Baits, use the MFM for Matt's Fish and Mission, MFM 10. Snag you some cool stuff. That's where I got the idea for uh, the old Ned, the nub. Not even going to call it a Ned anymore. He's a nubs from now on. My vocab has changed. Nubs. Set it up. Set it up like your Ned rig with the skirt head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We could do that. It would be baller. Uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't bring any hooks down here or I'd start skirting up some hooks. I just wanted to do a kind of a quick how-to on doing these doing these skirted nails. I'm not even gonna call them nail weights because these aren't providing uh, much weight at all. All right, we haven't cracked open the black and blue. Let's do that. Cracking open the black and blue. Guys, if you're just joining, what we're doing is we are making skirted nails to go in your wacky rigs for two pennies as long as you put two strands on there and the reason it's two pennies is the the ring shank nails are like a penny a piece and these strands end up being like a penny a piece so i think the the clutch way to to go is like two strands it's that nice subtle but still visible presentation See how quick I can go. Right, got it started. See, now I'm trying to rush and I'm messing it up. <laughs> And I got this one all jacked up. There we go. We're not going to mess with the whip finish. We're just going to do a couple of hand tied finishes. Or maybe. Man, I feel uncoordinated right now. Now we're going to finish. <laughs> That's the ticket. Boom. There you go. Trim that off. Yeah, wait. And then you pop that in any soft plastic. And now you've got a skirted presentation for your wacky rig. Killer. And for next to nothing, too. It's awesome. Do a white with chartreuse or maybe a green pumpkin with chartreuse. Okay, I got gotcha. you. We'll go... We'll go. I did a white with chartreuse. Let's we'll do green pumpkin with chartreuse. All right. Oh, you mean two different skirts? Let's do that. Let's throw a couple different skirt strands on there. We'll make it. Uh, we'll mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna go two strands. Two strands of green pumpkin. And I'll go two strands of chartreuse. There you go. See, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. Where's the chartreuse? There we go. Two strands of chartreuse. All right. Get those ready. All right. Let's, let's get our nail head. 
Give that a few ties. Trim me trim. All right, two and two. See, here's the rookie fly tying mistake. Get too much slack on my bobbin. Doesn't give you good tension. All right. Two green pumpkin, two chartreuse. And these rubber legs tend to stick to everything. There we go. All right, take those. And just like doing feathers, I try to take half of the material on one side and half on the other side of the nail so that it's pretty well balanced when you get everything done. Give us a whip finish. Boom, trim that up. Cut the skirts off. The skirts are molded so the ends are all like still glued, glued together. Trim those all even. Touch of glue. UV glue, seal that up, hit it with the light. Cure it up. I like that, look at that. Black and blue, chartreuse, what? What color worm you want to see this on? Black and blue, light brown, white, black, green pumpkin, baby bass. What do you want to see? What do you want to see this against? Uh, I don't have any Alabama crawl color in this box. I got all this stuff. I don't want to dump it out. I tell you what, the brown is kind of a kind of a close. It's about as close as I got. It's like a nice kind of close to crawl, like a brown, like a crawl shell would be. Pop that in there. You can give that some good pressure, and it's not really. Not really coming out. That's why you want to use the ring shank nail. Look at that. I like that. Okeechobee crawl. I've got kind of a dark Okeechobee crawl looking thing. Okeechobee crawl is like a kind of a dark black, dark blue, right? Is it? I forget what Okeechobee crawl color is. Anyway, let's let's try this one. Look at that. That is fire. That is fire right there. With that action, man, that skirt is gonna go wild. Look, you just barely have to give it any action in the water. That thing's gonna light up. You think bass aren't gonna attack that? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that's, that's clutch. All right, let's keep making these. Man, who's catching fish in the winter right now? Who's even going outside right now? I am staring at the white death out the window. <laughs> I got to fish for those rainbow trout the day before all the freaking snow came, and now the wind chills are in the, and the negatives for pretty much the uh, whole country, so we're going to be buried under snow for quite a while. Gary, you're not where you at, Florida? <laughs> I 
You could put the skirt on the other end of even a Texas rig. Yeah. Yeah, you could. You could put – you could use these skirts really in anything. That's why I bought like five different color or four different colors of the skirts just to, just to kind of, I don't know, dress up stuff. It's fun. Let's pop another nail weight. Nail skirt. Oh, rain. Nice, nice. Oh, I thought you were saying you weren't buried under snow. What are you saying? You're not just, you're not fishing, Gary? Because <laughs> I know you got snow and cold rain. Come on. I'm only 40 minutes away from that spot. I went fishing with Joel in January. Did you? You guys catch anything? Did you catch anything? Did Joel catch anything? Because I don't think I've seen a, uh, a catch video of his in a minute. Maybe? I don't know. Let me tell you, Joel put me onto those shorts, and I know some people don't like the short videos, the 60-second videos, but I think they're quick enough that people could just, like, scroll past them if you don't like them. Whatever. They're, uh, they're seeming to be a hit. And I think it's something that's, I don't know, get you through the winter when everybody's droughted out for content. Because, I don't know, I figured uh, it'd be a good thing to do each winter when I, when I pack up all my stuff is to take that year's adventures and cram them into 60-second adventures. You know, and if you don't like them, I don't know. I like them. I think they're they're a fun one minute of my time as I'm scrolling through news feeds. Some of them are awesome. Some of them are meh, but they're all fun. They all tell a story, right? All right. We got the PB and J on right now. How long did that one take? Getting in the zone now. You know what? I don't even think we need to glue these. Look at that. I see your friend request, Gary. Let me open this up. There you go. Put this in a white one. Just because the contrast looks good. Move out of the way, look at that. Tell me ain't that whack -alicious. That's fire. I'm telling you guys, these are awesome. Now, if you don't have a fly tying vise, that you can use. Take a pair of vice grips, right? Clamp it down on your nail weight. You can probably just put it like in between your knees and take some thread, wrap it around your nail weight first, put the skirt on, wrap more thread around there, get some nail polish or super glue, little dab at the end. Now, I would probably say be careful of super glue because that can be brittle sometimes and it may crack and you may lose your skirt. But like I said, these are two pennies. You may not even care. But I've picked up like clear discount like nail polish for 99 cents at some store and just put that around there. It doesn't cure very fast, but you just let it sit in front of a fan and then, you know, do them the day before you're going fishing. They're ready to go. I honestly don't even think you need glue because if you if you get a good knot at the end, you just uh, you, I don't think you'll need it. And like I said, two pennies. Who cares? If it comes unraveled. Pull the next one out. All right, Gary, I see you. Some are coming your way, sir. All right, let's grab another one.
If you are just joining, welcome to the live stream. What we're doing right now is we are tying up skirted nails. And why are we doing that? Well, we're using them to skirt out our wacky rigs. Now these are ring shank nails, just a regular old paneling nail from your hardware store. Get about three or 400 in a pack for like three bucks, four bucks. So these are like a penny a piece. Um, get a pack of skirt, the ones I find are like 259, 249, like three bucks. So and there's like 300 strands in there, a penny a strand. And uh, you just need a couple strands and one nail for uh, each each little setup. And that's a nail weight. Now I've seen these in every retail store for like three bucks. And you get, I don't know, two, three, maybe four. I haven't seen any with like four of them in there. But they're always like three bucks. And I'm like, why are these so expensive? These are nothing. Let's go chartreuse. No, let's go, let's go black and blue. Do I have those out somewhere? I don't think I've done these yet. Let's go black and blue and let's use like four strands. Tie it on, a couple whip finishes. Boom. How long did that take? 30, 30 seconds, a minute, maybe, whatever. As you get better with them, I've only done like 20 of these, so as you get better at, oh, I forgot to trim the ends off on this one. As you get better and quicker with tying these, man, you can really get cranking on these. Let's put this dark blue one in like a baby bass. Look at that. It's fire. Wacky rig supreme. Put one on each end, like Recovery Bastion said. That'd be awesome. Uh, Center frame request. Yes, I got it. I got the address. Dude, you just fell down your stairs. What the heck? Dude, you okay? Man, be careful. You fell down the stairs while watching this on your phone. I'll be really upset. <laughs> oh no! All right, I'm going to send you into some extra <laughs> nail weights. <laughs> oh man! Oh dude, I've done that. I've done that coming down the stairs, and I had like a big old glass of water with <laughs> coming down the stairs in my socks. Bit the dust, cup went flying everywhere. Great. All right. New nail. Whoa. All right, color me. Somebody hit me with a color or multiples of colors. I got chartreuse, I got black and blue, I got green pumpkin, I got PB and J. Somebody hit me with a color or two. If you just join in, here's what we're making. Skirted nails for your wacky rigs. All right, I see black and blue and the green pumpkin. Gary said PB and J. Let's do two strands of each. Let's 
Right. Two strands of black and blue. White and chartreuse for that baby bass color. I don't have white skirt. Although now that I'm starting to make these, I think I might get some other skirt colors. All right, we got the, what'd you say? Black and blue, green pumpkin, and chartreuse. All right, green pumpkin. Two strands. Boom. And then what? PB and J? PB and J? Two strands of that. Okay. Got two strands of each. Don't look good. When I put a little bit more strands on there, I do tend to want to put a little glue on there just to keep all those bad boys on there. Hit it with the light. Cure that glue out. Boom. Let's trim up these ends. Ooh. There we go. PB and J, black and blue, and green pumpkin. What color worm? Who are we gonna put this on? <clears throat> let's go. Uh, let's see. What haven't we put it on yet? Let's give it a look. See. Oh, straight black. Oh, dude, you read my mind. You read my mind. Straight black. Yep, that's happening. Yes, sir. This is, uh, I'm calling it, this is the best. This is the best combo right here. Jet Black Senko. Tri-color with all the dark colors of the skirt. That's right. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. I'm telling you. That is nice. All black Senko. Three colors of the skirting. Fire. Fire. Look at all these. I'm telling you. Look at that. These are fire. Put our any color. Put that baby bass. Look at that. That all chartreuse. Nail weight. Mmm. All oh, spicy and crunchy, don't you know? Anyway, let's make another one. Keep this one simple. We'll go a two two thread banger. CBG, what up, bro? We'll go, uh, we'll go a three-strander, because that's what came off of my hand there. CBG, how you doing tonight? Mr. Ivan? Where'd my thread go? Casual Bass Guy, if you guys haven't checked out his channel, do so. He's got a really unique perspective from fishing. And I, I don't know 
I don't know, Ivan, if this is like your identity on your channel, but I know you do a lot of the, uh, and I don't even know what you call it, a float tube, but it's that like float tube where you wear like flippers and you can like just kind of cruise around in a lake or a pond um, that's deeper than you can stand in. Uh, I don't know that I have any other channels and I'm subscribed to like a hundred different fishing channels that I just kind of, you know, cruise through content. I don't think I've seen anyone else do what you do. So you've got a very unique perspective. Um, like I said, I don't know if that's your channel identity, but it is super unique. I think you should, uh, I think you should really push more towards that float tubing world, I guess. There's not many people doing it, but it's such a unique perspective. Someone else that's got a unique perspective on their channel that I think is just cool is Kayak Mike. He, he catfishes from a kayak, which you never see. You never see. And I just think that's cool. I love people with unique content. Anyway, oh, I already have a nail on. Here we go. Three strands of black and blue. Easy peasy. Couple of whip finishes. Bam. Trim the, trim this, trim that. Nail weight done. Look at that. Nail weight, pop him in some plastic. Let's do the double. Let's do the double sided. One side's got green pumpkin, one side's got black and blue. Bass are gonna be having a, a nightmare of decisions deciding what end to go for. Check it. That's a wacky rig and dream right there. Okay, so CBG is asking, how do you start and end a wrap with a thread? Um, so when you're using a, a bobbin or just any thread, right? You're gonna start, and I'll show you with my finger here. So you start at the very beginning, right? And you're gonna have the extra, the tag end, kind of just laying out, right? Because that's the part you wanna bury. So let's say this was the hook or the nail or whatever you're doing. You leave that tag end kind of out, and then what you do is you go wrap around, down, and you're basically burying that tag end and then you're coming back and then right now it's trapped so then you would snip that off and then make a bunch of thread wraps and then you're ready to start putting material on and that kind of hurts my finger <laughs> so yeah that's all you do to start the thread uh to end the thread you use what's called a whip finisher and it creates like a knot if you don't have a whip finisher i'll show you really quick how you can finish one I'll just do a I'll just do a whole one. So check it out. Start the thread. All right? Can you kind of see that? It's kind of sorry. It's against my black shirt. But you're gonna start it at the the head of the nail, right? And I got my tag end pinched off. I'm going down just like an eighth of an inch, right? Wrap it a bunch of times. Come back towards the head. Go back down towards the thread. Now it's trapped. And now I can snip off the tag, right? And it's locked in. Give it a few more wraps. I go all the way towards the head of the nail or the head of the hook or wherever, whatever you're tying on. Then you're ready to put on your skirt material, whether it's feather or string or whatever, whatever your heart's desire. We'll go another black and blue, two strander. Then really lightly, because this stuff is rubber, so you don't want to pull it so tight that it like cuts, cuts it off and damages it. So just a couple threads, then if you're doing feathers or whatever, you pull everything back out of the way. Another just eighth of an inch down the head, up, back, up. Don't, don't, the only thing you don't wanna do is you don't want to create such a, a, a head that, it, that it's thicker 
than the size of the head because then it's not going to catch. So make sure you, when you're doing your thread wraps, not to go beyond the size of the nail head. Or if it's a hook, don't make it bigger than the eye of the hook because then your thread will end up slipping off. Okay, so if you don't have a fancy whip finisher, here's how you finish a knot. Let me do that here. Wu-Tang forever. So your thumb and your forefinger, you're just gonna make a pinch, right? Under your thumb, so we're coming towards your body, under your thumb, over there, and then back down. Put it over the nail and just pull it tight. And that's not as nice as a whip finish, so I do like two or three of these. If I'm just hand finishing a knot, I'm trying to get it right there at the head of the nail. And that's it. Boom. Now if I hand finish a knot, I probably will throw some na nail polish or glue or whatever on there because it's not as sturdy uh, or durable a knot as a whip finish knot is. Just because that whip finishing tool buries that thread under several wraps. Yeah, it's kind of like a hitch. But because you don't have the other end, you, it, you can't, uh, I'm not good at knots, so I don't know all the names of knots, but I think I have heard it called that. It's like a hitch finish or something like that. Trim up the skirts. Hello, dear. Can the producer interrupt? Yes. You can't see those. Oh yeah, Jen's telling me black shirt. no one can no one can see. Well, I'm holding it up here. That I know, way, but that your way people beard can and see. your shirt blends the color. You can't see any other. My producer said you guys can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go change out for a, a white shirt, an all white shirt. That's what I got to do for my lives next time I'm tying stuff. No more black shirts. <laughs> Thanks, honey. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Here you go. There you go. Super quick. That's hand finished. Next time I do one of these, I'll go get my vice grips and I'll try to tie one with no fly tying materials. I'll go get thread out of the basket <laughs> and I will get nail polish. And uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just tie it. Using one hand, I guess. I it, there, I have never tried that. In my head, it seems like it would work, but we'll find out. <laughs> there you go. Nail weight. We got a slew of these together now. I think I am going to go ahead and wrap it up. I appreciate you guys for jumping on, unless you want me to tie some more. You guys, you guys want to hang out. I am not doing anything but tying. Yeah, next time I'll wear a white shirt. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up, guys. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit the like button before we sign out. I would so much appreciate it. Um, drop a comment uh, after this goes live and you can throw comments in it. Tell me what else you want to see tied because I've got all kinds of fly tying material. I've got feathers and rabbit fur and all kinds of stuff. So I appreciate you guys. Have a great night. God bless.